Hello chemists and welcome to Bale's Chemistry. In this video, we're gonna look at how to calculate the number of moles in a solution. If you haven't already, click the subscribe button below to let us help you on your A-level chemistry journey. So when we're thinking about the number of moles in a solution, it's all about the concentration. This is how much of a substance is dissolved in the solution. We often think about measuring the chemicals or substance in grams, but this is easily converted into moles. When we think of the volume, we think of it measured in centimeters cubed, but this can be converted into decimeters cubed, which is the unit of volume used by chemists when giving a concentration. When we describe the concentration of a solution, we say moles per decimeter cubed, which can be written as mol dm to the minus three. That's the number of moles for every decimeter of solution. And we can use this equation to calculate the number of moles of solution. That's number of moles equals volume times concentration. Now this can often be shortened to moles equals vol times conch, and it can be rearranged to give volume and concentration. It's also often quicker to change out the moles for the letter N, and you'll see this in lots of your calculations. When it comes to measuring liquids in the lab, we always measure in centimeters cubed. But in our equation, we use the volume in decimeters cubed. So we need to convert from centimeters cubed to decimeters cubed. And to do this, we divide by a thousand. Sometimes it's easier to write this into the equation as the number of moles equals volume divided by a thousand times by concentration. In our first example, we'll calculate the concentration of a solution where two moles of sodium hydroxide has been dissolved in 450 centimeters cubed of solution. We'll start off with our basic equation. We'll then rearrange this equation to give the concentration. And then we'll substitute in the numbers to give the complete calculation, not forgetting to convert our centimeters cubed into decimeters. In our second example, we'll calculate how many moles are present in a 40 centimeter cubed sample with a concentration of 0.45 moles per decimeter cubed. Again, we'll start with our equation, and this time we don't need to rearrange it, but we must remember to convert the volume to decimeters cubed. And then finally, we'll add in the numbers and work out the number of moles present. In the third example, we're gonna calculate what volume of 0.25 moles per decimeter cubed will contain one mole of molecules. Starting with our equation, We'll then rearrange it to get volume, and then finally we'll substitute in the numbers to calculate our final answer. Sometimes concentrations can be given in grams per decimeter cubed. And if we want to convert between moles and grams, we can use a number of moles equals mass over MR rearranged to give mass. We can add in our numbers and finding the MR of our substance being dissolved to give the amount in grams. This is a quick and easy way to switch between moles per decimeter cubed and grams per decimeter cubed. The final thing we're going to look at with moles in solutions is reacting different amounts of solutions together. This is a very similar process as when dealing with masses. and We just find the number of moles using the volume times concentration instead of mass over MR. We'll start with a balanced equation and then we'll work out the moles of our known, in this case, the calcium carbonate. Then we'll use the coefficients in the equation to calculate the moles of nitric acid needed. And then finally, we'll calculate the volume of nitric acid needed overall. In summary then, moles in solution equals number of moles equals volume times concentration. Don't forget to convert centimeters cubed to decimeters cubed when using measurements taken in the lab. If we need to go from moles per decimeter cubed to grams per decimeter cubed, we can use the equation that we've already learned, which is number of moles equals mass over MR. And when we're dealing with reacting solutions, it's the same process as with reacting masses. We just use a different equation that we've learned today. Thanks chemists for watching this episode of Bale's Chemistry. Help me out and share the video with someone. Give the video a thumbs up and leave a comment below.